Hey guys, so in this video we're going to start solving rotation problems with conservation of energy. Let's check it out. So you may remember that when you have a motion problem between two points, meaning the object starts here, ends up over here somewhere, um, where either the speed, V, the height, H, or the spring compression, X, changes, any combination of those three guys changes, we can use most of the time a cons the conservation of energy equation to solve these problems. So we're going to do that now to rotation questions. The only difference is that in rotation, your kinetic energy can be not only linear, but also rotational. So that's the new thing that you could be spinning. And you could actually be, it could also be both, right? It could be that our total kinetic energy is linear plus rotational. So we're going to use the conservation of energy equation, which is K initial plus U initial plus work non-conservative equals K final plus U final. I want to remind you that work non-conservative is the work done by U, by some external force, plus the work done by friction if you have some. Now, when you do this, remember you write the energy equation and then you start expanding the equation. What I mean by expanding is you replace K with what it is. And K used to be simply half mv squared. But now it could be that you have both of them, right? It could be, let's say that, in, or let's say instead of half mv squared, the object is just spinning. So you're gonna write I omega squared, okay? The key thing to remember, and you would do this for the rest of them, the key thing to remember, the most important thing in these questions to remember is that you will rewrite V and omega in terms of each other. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that when you expand the entire equation, you might end up with one V and one W or two Vs and one W, whatever. If you have a V and a W, that's two variables, you're going to change one into the other so that you end up with just one variable. For example, most of the time V and W are linked by this, or sometimes they are linked by this, right? Sometimes they're not linked at all, but most of the time they're connected by either one of these two equations, which means I'm, what I'm gonna do is rewrite W as V over R, and wherever I see a W, I'm gonna replace it with a V over R. So instead of having V and W, I have V and V. And that means that instead of having two variables, I have just one, and it's easier to solve the problems. That's the key thing to remember, is rewrite one into the other. Let's do an example. All right, so here we have a solid disk. Solid disk, let's stop there. It means that the moment of inertia we're going to use is the same of a solid disk, which is the same as a solid cylinder, and it's going to be half mR squared. And it says it's free to rotate about a fixed perpendicular axis through its center. Lots of words. Let's analyze what's saying here. Free to rotate just means that you could rotate, right? Like you can actually spin. Some things can be spun around, others can't. Um, but even though it says that it's free to rotate, it's around a fixed axis. Okay? Remember, it's the difference between a roll of toilet paper that is fixed on the wall and it's free to rotate around the fixed axis versus a free roll of toilet paper that can roll around the floor, okay? Here, we're fixed in place, so we're gonna say that it spins like this, so it has no V, right? Like the actual disc has no velocity V because it's not moving sideways, the center of mass doesn't change position, um, but it does spin, okay? Actually, we don't know which way it spins, um, let's leave it alone for now, but I'm just gonna write that omega is not zero, because it's going to spin. Now, what else? It says that the axis is through its center, so it's spinning around the center like this, okay? And it's saying that it's perpendicular. Perpendicular means that it makes a 90 degree angle, okay? Perpendicular means it makes a 90 degree angle with the object. So I got a little disc here. Um, this sort of looks like a disc, and I wanna show you real quick what perpendicular means. So imagine the, this is the face of the disc, Perpendicular means 90 degrees to the face of the disc, which means I'm gonna stick my fingers in here and it looks like this, cool? So perpendicular looks like this. This is the axis of rotation, which means the disc spins like this, okay? Hope that, that makes sense. So you're gonna see this all the time. Perpendicular is just going to mean 90 degrees with the face, just means that the disc spins like this, which is how you would imagine the disc spins. Um, a disc isn't gonna do this, right? Or some weird stuff. 
So it just spins around its center like that. Cool. So disc spins like that. This is sort of a top view of the disc. Um, okay, so the disc has mass five, m equals five, radius six, and it is initially at rest. So omega initial is zero because it starts at rest. And then you have a light, a long light cable that's wrapped several times around the cylinder, the disc, okay? Light means that the cable has no mass. So I'm gonna write here, mass of the cable is zero. And you wrap it up a bunch of times. You got a lot of problems like this. And basically what we're doing is we're saying, we're setting it up to say there's all this rope around this thing. So when I pull on it, it's going to unwind. So it says here, you pull on the cable with a constant 10 newtons. So let's draw a cable right here. And then it says uh, force of 10 in such a way that the cable unwinds horizontally at the top of the disc. The cable unwinds horizontally at the top of the disc is exactly what I just drew here, right? So the cable is unwinding horizontally. It doesn't say if it's to the right, left or to the right. Um, I just drew it to the right. Um, now the word unwind here is repeated, sorry about that, and then without slipping. This is key. Um, because it's unwinding without slipping, I can say that the velocity of the rope equals little r omega, okay? And this thing, this rope will have a velocity v. This thing will have an omega of the disk. So v rope is r omega of the disk, where r is the point where the rope touches the disk. So it's where or it's distance between center, the axis of rotation, I should say axis of rotation, distance between the axis of rotation and the point where the rope touches the disc or where the rope pulls on the disc, okay? Let me show you a quick example here just to be very clear here. Let's say this disc has a radius of 10. So the distance all the way to the end here is 10. But, I, the, but let's say I'm pulling right here at a distance five. So what I use in this equation, V rope equals R omega, I would use the five, okay? Just to be clear, when you write these equations here, we're gonna do this a bunch of times, um, the R is not the radius, that's why it's a little R, not a big R, it's how far from the center the rope pulls. In this particular case, uh, particular case, the rope is pulling at the edge, so your little r happens to be the radius. And by the way, that's how it all, almost always happens. But you could have it, um, you could have a different situation like this. So you should be ready just in case. Um, r is typically the radius, but it doesn't have to be the radius. In this case, the radius is six meters. Okay. So without slipping is what tells us that we can use this equation right here. Okay, without slipping is what tells us that we can use this equation right there. All right, ignore any frictional forces. If you don't see that, you can just assume that you're supposed to ignore friction unless it tells you what the friction is. And then we're gonna use conservation of energy to find the angular speed of the pulley. So I wanna know what is omega final? What is omega final after you've pulled a rope for eight meters? So you're gonna pull the rope with a force of 10 with for a distance delta x of eight meters. Picture's a little tight here, but basically would look like this. Until eight meters of rope um, unwinds from the disc, all right? So let's use conservation of energy and we're looking for W final. So kinetic initial, potential initial, plus work non-conservative, equals kinetic final plus potential final, okay? The, is there initial kinetic energy here? There is no kinetic energy at the beginning because the disc isn't spinning. There's no linear energy and there's no rotational energy. The disc doesn't move sideways and in the beginning it doesn't spin. Um, there's no potential energy and that's because um, the Remember, potential energy is relative to a change, in, depends on your change in height, and the height doesn't change. Delta H is zero. The disc keeps its same height 
So you can just cancel out these two guys, right? You do have a potential energy because you are above the floor, uh, but the two potential energies are the same, okay? Now, what about work non-conservative? Work non-conservative is the work done by you plus the work done by friction. There's no friction here. It told us to ignore frictional effects, but you are pulling on this thing, right? And the work done by you is the work done by a force F, which is F D cosine of theta. Okay, your force is 10. You do this for a distance D of eight meters. And cosine of theta, remember, is the angle between your displacement and the force. Now here you push this way and the rope moves this way. So the angle here is zero. So I'm going to do the cosine of zero. And the cosine of zero is one. So I have 10 times eight times one, 80, okay? So this is 80 joules. And at the end we have kinetic final. Um, kinetic final could be linear and it could be rotational. Is there linear energy at the end? There isn't because the disc spins around itself, but there is rotational kinetic energy at the end. So let's expand that. 80 equals half I omega squared, omega final. And this is exactly what we're looking for right here, omega final. Okay, so let's expand the I. So it's gonna be half, I'm gonna put the I in here. I is half MR squared because we know it's a solid disc. So I'm gonna put half, the mass is a five and the radius is a six. Let me just put a six there. Cool. Now what we can do is we can move everything to the other side and solve for omega. So here we have 80 equals, um, this whole thing here gives us a 45 omega final squared. So omega final is 80 divided by 45. And then you take the square root of both sides, you get this. And if you solve this, um, get out of the way, you get 1.33 radians per second. Okay? And that's the final answer. This took a little while, but it's because I wanted to introduce some of the terminology uh, for these kinds of questions, some of the language you're going to see. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned how if you have a V, um, if, let me write this here, if you have a V and a W, you're going to rewrite W in terms of V, right? Well, in this question, when I expanded everything, I only had a W, so I didn't have to change one into the other, and I was looking for W, so I just solved for it, okay? So you do that if you have the two variables so that you can simplify. That's it for this one. Let's keep going. Let me know if you have any questions.